The Rhea Ripley fractured orbital bone injury announced Wednesday by WWE is indeed legitimate and was sustained at some point last week. Dave Meltzer reported the above detail on last night's Wrestling Observer Radio, saying he assumed the break most likely happened on last week's WWE Raw during the brawl between herself, Liv Morgan, and Raquel Rodriguez. Rhea was written off in storyline during Tuesday's WWE NXT as Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez attacked Rhea Ripley in the parking lot. WWE announced the NXT angle was when Rhea Ripley's injury was sustained, with Meltzer saying that was done as a storyline cover for her to be out of action. Rhea had not been announced for any match on Saturday's Crown Jewel, which will see Liv Morgan take on Nia Jax for the inaugural and ceremonial Crown Jewel title. There is no timeline currently for Rhea Ripley's return. 2024 has been tough injury-wise for Rhea, who was out for nearly three months earlier this year due to a shoulder injury. As for Liv Morgan, the Women's World Champion has inked a new long-term WWE contract. During an appearance on Logan Paul's Impulsive Podcast this week, Liv Morgan mentioned that she recently signed a new five-year contract with the company. When asked about her plans going forward, Liv Morgan said she intends on being with WWE for as long as the company will have her. Liv Morgan is currently in the midst of the biggest run of her career. She's currently aligned with Dominic Mysterio and Raquel Rodriguez as part of the Judgment Day, and of course is feuding with Rhea Ripley. Moving on to our next story, after months of rumors, former WWE star Bobby Lashley has made his debut on Wednesday's AEW Fright Night Dynamite by leading a beatdown of Swerve Strickland. Swerve had just defeated Shelton Benjamin in the evening's main event when MVP then made a call to someone. Seconds later, the lights went out and Bobby Lashley emerged, walking into the ring and going face to face with Swerve, leaving Bobby and Shelton to attack Swerve. The three also beat up several security members who attempted to come into the ring standing tall over everyone. MVP then grabbed the microphone and said, guess who's back in business? A call back to the unit formerly called the Hurt Business in WWE, which is expected to be called the Hurt Syndicate in AEW. Along with MVP and Shelton Benjamin, the 48-year-old Bobby Lashley became a free agent earlier after long runs with WWE this year. He hasn't wrestled since a May WWE house show match in France, and this will be his first action outside of WWE since 2018 when he was in TNA. Additionally on Fright Night, Private Party unseated the Young Bucks to both win the AEW Tag Team titles and avoid splitting up as a team. The match ended when Mark Quinn and Isaiah Cassidy hit the gin and juice on Nicholas Jackson, getting the pin and their first reign as champions after starting with the company in 2019. The loss ends the Bucks' third reign as champions, one that began 192 days ago at April's Dynasty when they defeated FTR in a ladder match for the then-vacant titles. They had five title defenses in this most recent run. On to some other news stories that broke this week. WWE is launching a new program to help assist with the development of independent wrestlers. A counterpart to the company's next-in-line system for college athletes, WWE announced the creation of a new independent development program. It will see WWE partner with select training schools and indie wrestlers to establish a potential pathway to wrestlers joining WWE. Organizations run by Booker T, Cody Rhodes, and Seth Rollins are among those that WWE has partnered with for the WWE ID program. In a press release, WWE said, under the program, WWE will provide prominent independent wrestling schools with the WWE ID official designation with the goal of providing new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced developmental opportunities. Additionally, WWE ID will identify top independent wrestling prospects with an official WWE ID prospect designation and support their developmental journey by providing financial opportunity and assisting with training, mentorship, and development, including access to world-class facilities, best-in-class ring training, athletic trainers, and more. WWE ID will give fans the opportunity to follow the paths of these standout prospects on the independent wrestling scene through curated behind-the-scenes content, as well as highlights and matches showcased across WWE's social platforms platforms. Paul Triple H Levesque praised the level of talent on the indies and said he wants to help support them on the journey to making their dream a reality. Triple H tweeted, 
The level of talent on the independent scene is incredible. They're grinding away to make their dream a reality, and I'm excited for WWE to be on the forefront of supporting their journeys. WWE ID is here to help identify, support, and build the next generation of WWE superstars. The Next in Line system was started in 2021. Ahead of a potential career in WWE, college athletes chosen for the program sign NIL deals and are given access to the Performance Center, along with resources in brand building, media training, communications, live event promotion, creative writing, and community relations. On to our next story. Vince McMahon is preparing to launch a new company. PW Insider reported that the 79-year-old who resigned from TKO Group Holdings in January wants to establish a new entertainment hub company to fund, develop, and produce film and television projects. The company does not plan to compete with WWE or develop wrestling content and is expected to be based in Los Angeles. The company is looking to launch once Vince McMahon's legal issues are resolved. Several WWE employees are said to have already confirmed for the new organization, including former WWE COO Brad Blum, who resigned from the company in May shortly after being identified as corporate officer number two in the Janelle Grant lawsuit. Former WWE Senior Vice President of Entertainment Relations Kristen Prouty is also linked to McMahon's new company. Kristen left WWE earlier this year as part of TKO's redundancy layoffs. She has previously worked as a casting director and was said to have been pivotal in helping to bring Logan Paul to WWE. In addition to the lawsuit filed by Grant this January, Vince McMahon is also being sued by five survivors of the infamous Ring Boy scandal. The suit names Vince McMahon, his wife, Linda McMahon, WWE, and TKO Group Holdings, alleging that Vince McMahon and his company company were aware of the abuse and did nothing to stop it. A spokesperson representing Janelle Grant, Kendra Bark of Lamy, has released a statement on reports that Vince McMahon is preparing to launch an entertainment company, saying, both on and off camera, Vince McMahon has built a reputation for his violent outbursts, sexual deviance, manipulation, and abuse. No one who cares about survivors and justice should want to work for or with any company of McMahon's. He needs to be held accountable for the heinous acts he committed against Janelle Grant and others at WWE. Kendra also spoke with Forbes yesterday regarding WWE's lack of sexual harassment policy on its website, which was evidently removed at some point after June 2022. She said the following, WWE has been sued many times for failing to protect employees from sexual misconduct by executives and toxic workplace culture, including by Janelle Grant, who endured years of sexual abuse at the hands of founder and former WWE CEO Vince McMahon, WWE executive John Laronitis, and the WWE organization. Adding, it is outrageous that WWE claims to have improved their workplace environments, yet they have no visible sexual harassment or workplace conduct policies listed on their website. This means WWE employees have no reference for appropriate behavior and no visible guidelines to report abuse. This is yet another example of WWE's carelessness and failure to protect their employees. And we can only hope no one is harmed by this dangerous oversight. WWE employees deserve better. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to update you on more of the biggest stories in pro wrestling. Don't forget to subscribe to F4W online and we'll catch you on the next one. Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful.